Hello, this video is going to show how we can assure that code is both safe and secure using QNX Momentix version 7.1 and an 8-core 64-bit ARM target. Now, first of all, I need to be able to deploy QNX on a 64-bit ARM target, and in order to do that, I'm going to be using QEMU. Now, I've used WSL in order to be able to install Ubuntu on my Windows PC, and inside of Ubuntu, Ubuntu, I've been able to install QNX using uh, QEMU, and as we can see, we have a number of, of uh, cores running here. In fact, it looks like we have eight cores. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run what we call the Eldery build import, and inside the Eldery import, I'm going to be invoking the IDE for QNX Momentix. Why am I doing this? Well, I want to be able to listen to what's happening inside QNX Momentix so I can find out everything about the project that I'm interested in. in. So let's go and invoke the IDE. So here we can see we're invoking the QNX Momentix. This is the latest version 7.1. And inside here, I've created a number of, of projects. And we're going to be able to take a, a look at one in particular, which is a, a C project, which has a number of of tasks that are communicating together and this project runs for a certain length of time and then stops and terminates. Okay, so here we can see the project I'm interested in. Let's switch to this particular perspective here and we're going to be able to see I've got a number of projects but this is the one I'm interested in. There we can see we have the main and as we can see it goes round in a loop a certain number of times and then eventually aborts and kills the tasks and exits. So what I need to do is I need to do a clean of this project and then I'm going to do a build and it's important to do a clean so that LDRA is going to be able to see all the files that have been compiled. Now let's go and actually execute this and see what it does on the target. So let's go and execute this. So we'll just debug this and we should see this is going to connect to the target. So that looks like we have connected. We're now going to switch to the debug view and we're going to download to the target and we should see it run until it gets to the, the main. There we can see we've stopped in main and I'm simply going to go and let this run until it gets to the end and there we can see we have two tasks that are running and uh, a third one, the main, is simply printing out a dot and when it's done that ten times it's then going to stop and exit. So that's the program I'm interested in and there's a number of things that I want to be able to do. First of all, I want to be able to look at this code, analyze it, and see, well, is it compliant to a coding standard such as CERT or, or MISRA? So let's go and close this down. And what I'm going to do, or what we're going to see, is LDRA has analyzed everything we've done so far. And we can see we've built an executable. So we have a target here. We've got our list of source files. We have a list of include paths, and also preprocessor symbols. So I have everything I need now in order to be able to open this with TB Vision and analyze that project. Well, to save time, I've already done that, and I'm simply going to go and open TB Vision, and there we can see we've analyzed the source code, and I should now be able to go and do things like a, a code review. In this particular case, I'm doing it against the Misery 2012, but I was more in, 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 uh, interested in security or maybe the CERT standard, then I can certainly do it against that. Well, let's do a code review and see how this code complies to the MISRA C 2012 standard. Well, as we can see, it's not compliant. We have a, a number of violations. Well, I should be able to simply double click on a violation. This will take me to uh, using my editor to the place where we have a violation. Well, that's fairly easy to fix. OK, well, what about, uh, what about these in grey? Well, this one here, if I double click on it, it's going to take me to a place where I've actually justified a violation. So I've justified the violation by putting an elder exclude tag into the code. And here I've put my justification code. So that's justification uh, message. So that's one way of being able to justify a violation. Alternatively, if you wanted to justify a violation, you could just simply right click and you can justify it using an external ini file. Well, I'm not going to do that in that particular case because I've already done some here. And if I go to my ini file, we should be able to see that I've already justified this one. And there I've got my justification. So two ways of justifying violations. 
If I was to now generate a code review report, we're going to be able to see that this code is, is not compliant. So we're not compliant against the MISRA C2012 standard. We can see we have a number of, of violations here. And if I do a search for the word uh, control F, search for justification, we should be able to see that here I have a number of justifications. This is one that I put into the external any file, and this is the one I've put into the source code. And again, we can see here the justification text. OK, so that's uh, the code review. What about the quality of this code? Well, let's take a look and view it maybe a, a system call diagram. And the system call diagram is going to show us all the functions. We can see how they're interconnected. And I'm particularly interested in putting this into a, a view that gives me an idea of metrics that show me is this code complex or not. In this case, you can see we have measured the cyclomatic complexity. Well, this one's got a value of two. What does that mean? Well, it means there's effectively two paths through the code. And we can see very clearly we have one path and a second path. This one's got a value of four. And again, you can count and see those four paths through the code. This one's got a value of five. Now, what I'd like to be able to do is to execute this code. And by doing that, we're going to try and find out, well, which of these paths have we taken through the code? In order to do that, we're going to instrument the source code. We're going to put probes at the start and the end of each of these blocks. And let's go and perform that. So first of all, I need to go and instrument the source code. Well, I've already done that to save time. I'm going to perform the build. I'm going to execute it. And then I'm going to perform the dynamic coverage analysis. So let's start that. So first of all, that's going to switch the original code with the instrumented code. It's then going to perform the build using the, uh, the GCC compiler here. And then we're going to execute this on the target. Now we can see we're executing it on the target. Now we can see it's executing similar to what we saw before. Wait for this to, to end. And then we're going to upload the results. And we're going to be able to find out, well, how much of that code have we actually exercised. So again, just wait a little bit of time for that to complete. And then there's various ways in which we can view the results. But once again, I think the call diagram is probably the most interesting one to view here. So let's go to the system call diagram. And on the system call diagram, this time I'm going to put it into a view that shows me coverage. And I can sort and find rapidly where I'm missing coverage. And once again, we can view this as a flow diagram. And this time, this is color coded in green to show us the paths we've taken through the code. Yellow is yes, we've executed it, but we haven't executed every exit from that block. And of course, here, this is a block we haven't executed. Why not? Well, this is typical defensive programming and looks like I've never uh, failed to get this sem semaphore here. If I wanted, we could actually complement this and actually get the coverage. So I would like to get 100% coverage. So let's go and invoke the next tool in the tool suite, which is TBRun. And this is going to allow me to do the unit testing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simply go and open a sequence of test cases that I've created previously. So I've got a few inside this folder here. I'm going to open that. And what we'll see is we have a number of inputs and outputs. Some of these, I'm just going to run this while, and while it's running. We can see for some of these, there are some missing functions that we've stubbed. And since we've stubbed a function, we're able to actually get it to do various things. In this particular case, this is an infinite loop. And so I'm telling it when this function here has been called four times, I want to exit that loop. OK, well, that's run. The tests have, have passed. And we should be able to find that the coverage for our function, well, we only had 93% statement coverage before. We should now find that that should be 100%. So just wait again for this to complete. And yes, we can see in this run, we haven't got 100% branch decision coverage, but the combination has given us what we need. Similarly, I can go and run another sequence of test cases. So let's run it for the other file where we didn't have 100% coverage. Once again, I'm just going to go and run this. And this should then complete the coverage and the combination of the two uh, sequences we've run, as well as the dynamic analysis, should give us that 100% statement coverage and 100% branch decision coverage. In this particular case, I don't have any MCDC, 
otherwise I could have measured that as well. So once again, just waiting for this to analyse the results and then we should be able to see that we have the complete coverage. So yes, 100% statement and branch decision coverage. And finally, I could then go back to here and generate a, a report. So a number of different reports I could generate. In this case, I'm just going to generate a, a classic report here and we should be able to see the result of everything we've done so far. So in this particular case, we can see the code review, a few violations, the quality generally pretty good. So it looks like it's the main that's uh, maybe a little difficult to test. And the test verification, we have 100% statement branch decision coverage. There's no MCDC. And there we can see we've executed our two test cases and they've passed. OK, that hopefully has given you an idea of how we can assure that code is both safe and secure using the Eldery tool suite and QNX Mementix. And if you'd like any more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at Eldery. Thank you.